This is Jamie Schmidt just one day after surgery for ovarian cancer. It often strikes older women, but Jamie was just 24 years old when she was first diagnosed. Two years later, she found out the cancer was back. Jamie is 32 now and dedicated to finding a cure and helping other women facing ovarian cancer. Jamie joins us now along with Kelly Zembrowski, president of the Wisconsin Ovarian Cancer Alliance. Thanks for being here, ladies. Thank, Thank you for having us. us. Nice to see you both. Yeah, and, and one of the um, acronyms that you're kind of bringing back is WOCA for Wisconsin Ovarian Cancer Alliance. What do you do at WOCA? Um, actually, there is no test for ovarian cancer, so our biggest goal is to make sure everybody knows the symptoms of ovarian cancer, because yes, since 2007, they have recognized what these ladies are saying. There's two things that they say. It's an older women's disease, and you they call it the silent killer. Mm -hmm. Neither one of them are true. We have met so many young women who have ovarian cancer, and it is now called the disease that whispers because they are recognizing symptoms that these ladies are having. Jane, it's unbelievable that you were diagnosed at just 24 years old. I can't imagine what it's like to be that young and to find out you have ovarian cancer because there has been a long time, um, there's been this, this, not stigma, but there's been this association with ovarian cancer and it happening with women who are a lot older than you, way even older than 32. Um, as you look back on it now, were there some sim symptoms that were whispering to you that you maybe didn't think about? Yes, definitely. Um, I had a lot of bloating and a lot of abdominal pelvic pain, and I was feeling full quickly. Um, and I'm a, a big eater, so mm -hmm. those. <laughs> and those are very, those are actually some of the symptoms that whisper, right? That's yeah. correct. That's what they say. They say, um, use the word beat. Beat is for blo the B is for bloating, E is for the eating disorder, A is for the abdominal pain, and T is for the urinary tract, the infection, the, you know, the problems that they're having, rushing to the bathroom, mm -hmm. feeling the urgency and getting in there and really nothing happening. So It's so tough because when you hear these symptoms, I think every woman has had all of those symptoms at some time or another. So is the key that you have to be having these persistently and consistently? Correct. And, right. and, and all together, or could you just have one or two of those symptoms? You could have one or two. It doesn't really make a difference. Sometimes women um, actually are feeling other things, and it's really the ovarian cancer itself. You know, um, thing is that, that it's not talked about enough. And our biggest thing is there's no test. We don't have a mammogram. We don't have a PSA. Um, these ladies need, when they do find out they have ovarian cancer, a gynecological oncologist. It's the best doctor to take care of them. So when Jamie came and called me and was talking to me, and she didn't consider herself a survivor of ovarian cancer, and I was trying to convince her into coming to an event we were having, and she was like, no, no, no. But we got her here, and she's now got her story to tell, and people need to know because there are many young women out there who have ovarian cancer. Why, why didn't you see yourself mm -hmm. as a cancer survivor? Um, I guess because I really didn't suffer through the whole thing. I was diagnosed at stage 1C, and um, I didn't have chemo, I didn't have radiation, I just carried on with my life. Um, had three surgeries, but it uh, didn't really hold me down, so I just didn't... That's interesting. It. And mm. what about with the second time you were diagnosed? Did you have chemotherapy then? I was told I was going to, um, and then when I woke up from surgery, I was told I didn't have to go through it, so... They removed your ovaries, I'm assuming? Yes, I've had a complete hysterectomy. Okay. So. And at such a young age, was that a hard, a hard thing for you to think about having that kind of uh, procedure so early? You know, at the time, it was really easy for me to decide to go through with it because I didn't want to, you know, live with wondering if it was going to recur or not. But um, it's, it's a hard thing I deal with every day. Um, it comes with troubles of dating and menopause and hot flashes all the time and stuff like that. So dealing with that at a young age is kind of... Yeah. Difficult. Yeah, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. to, to not have that not have that option at thirty two, I'm sure it looks a lot different than when you're twenty four or twenty five or twenty six, um, the, the second time you were diagnosed. I wonder too, you mentioned the PSA and I've read some information about um, and, and that's the unfortunate thing about ovarian cancer is that there isn't a good test like cervical cancer or mammograms for breast cancer. Mm -hmm. Is there some information? Because I read there may be some something on the horizon with regular blood tests eventually leading to like the PSA where you can do comparisons from year to year and, and find out earlier if a woman has ovarian cancer. You know, they keep talking about it. The thing is that it's really not there yet. And we do um, work with a doctor out in Madison, so when we do have some extra funds, we donate for his research 
because we know that's exactly where the money is going to. It's for ovarian cancer. There is a CA-125, that which is a blood test, in which they use once these ladies are diagnosed with ovarian cancer. But along with that blood test, they should also have a transvaginal ultrasound, which really can com kind of complete what, was, what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. So until they have that test, we're there to try to educate and bring awareness to these symptoms and make sure that everybody knows. Just like breast cancer has their pink, we have our teal. As you see, we're sporting mm -hmm. it here today. <laughs> yeah, I like and that. We, all, we also have the month of September, which they do ovarian cancer. So we try to get out there in September and bring up as much awareness as we can. Mm -hmm. so. And you also have a, an event coming up here in October. We want to make sure everybody knows about so they can come out and shop for a cause. It's their fundraiser going on Saturday, October 19th. It's at Red Mill and Elm Grove Road in Brookfield. That's how you can go out, shop for a cause, really support Ovarian Cancer Alliance here in Wisconsin. Their phone number for more information is 262-797-7804. Or for more information, there's lots on their website as well. It's Wisconsin Ovarian Cancer.com. And remember, there is no good test, so you really do have to listen to those symptoms that whisper. Thanks so much for being here, And ladies. thanks for these. Yeah. They're so cute. We appreciate it. Olivia. Thanks for <laughs> is that the name? Yes, oh, that's cute. Olivia. Olivia. That's great. Thanks for bringing awareness Thank to you. us. We appreciate it. Thanks,